Okay, assalamu alaikum. I just want to make a quick video. Um, uh, just a very short video. Um, because of... What is the um, video about? I am going to elaborate after a few more consultation on this issue. But the, the thoughts of it keep me awake. The thoughts of it keep me awake. That's why I just said, let me do a quick video to get something out of my chest. And um, but we'll deal with it. I I will not go into the details by uh, identifying the, the 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 victim involved. But I am because I'm going to wait for the victim to come out themselves. But what I will say is I will give the support to these victims just as I give support to any other victim. Um, Gambia, we are treading. We are treading on a very thin line um, to, that will cause a serious unrest, or a serious unrest. What actually happened yesterday, a prominent victim family in the Gambia, victim of Yajame, prominent victim of Yajame, um, call me, who I will term a family member, a friend and a family member. Call me to explain what uh, victimization they are suffering right now in the hands of the borough government. And um, as I said, I'm not going to go into certain details, but I will give enough for people to understand what it's about. And this is not only the first one. It's not only the it's not the only case, but it just make it more more relevant or 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 or, or expose it more. Um, that's why I've I've written a post this morning, just just recent uh, just now. After I put the post, I said I have I just I just had to say something for people to understand why I wrote that post. In that post, I said that it's not that, it's not that victims are powerless. It's just that they cannot do it alone. When the majority in society are silenced, and that silence is supporting the perpetrators of, 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 of the crime. This is what is happening. Because this family, it's not that they are weak. It's not that they are powerless because I know their capacity, um, I know their influences, but they didn't want to use any other means. But they want to use, they want to protect their dignity, they want to protect their right, and they want to ensure that what belongs to them stays with them. And no government or individual can use the power of government in order to force them to, to hand over something that's their right, right, rightful property. And this victim stood up against the Ayame. This, victims, uh, this victim family stood against the Ayame. When generally in the Gambia, they, uh, people looked the other way. They stood as a family and disappointed. They, have, they haven't got the justice they, they, uh, um, they required on the case of what happened to their family. And now, not only that, now this government that we voted in to change the dictatorship, that government now is, I mean, I mean, pushing them, I mean, I mean, I mean, now abusing their rights. And um, to put more context in it, before coming to this family, I'll give an example. In the, during, Jame, Jame took a property from a Gambian expatriate. Um, 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 in, um, the property is uh, somewhere around Bijiro. And uh, when Jam how Jame took that property, Jame saw the property, very nice building, that Jame wanted. 
at Jamme Sen Amadou Samba to contact the family that he want to buy that property of them. You just imagine if a president would see a property already built, the property was not for sale, the person did not put for sale or, or advertise anywhere that he's going to sell it, but it was so good that the president said that he wants the property. Obviously, the expert wants that property for his family, and he said he was not going to sell. What happened? They sent the NIA to arrest a member of the family who was looking after the property, and that member of family was, was um, taken to the NIA and tortured to the extent that the property owner, to save the family member, have to agree to sell the property. Now, after the torture, agreeing to sell the property, Yaya Jami decided the price. He did not pay the price that the uh, properties were. Yaya Jami decided to decide the price and pay the price he wanted to pay. That's not selling. Now, after everything, that was the property. That was the property Yajami took and gave his second wife, um, Amina Sala. That was property um, Yajami put his second wife, Amina Sala. That property right now is still within government. Government is holding onto that property. I'm not, still, I'm not coming onto the reason why I am, uh, this is part of the reason. Because we, I am following up that, that this thing, but just shows you, I'm going to name the people behind all this. Now, when this government came, Batambedu uh, and um, the Drame, local government minister um, Drame uh, and Baro and the Cabal, they decided properties that they want or what they want from Jamesh uh, loot, they put it aside. This property in question was not taken to the Journal Commission. But these people, the expatriate family, written to the um, uh, Journal Commission to explain the circumstances of this property, how this property became, uh, came under Jamie's uh, portfolio. This is their property. And they were ready to reclaim their property by paying back the money Jamie had paid them. They have produced evidence that their member of the family was abused at the NIA to the extent of death for them to sell the property. Now, after doing all that, this government could have resolved this issue by accepting this person to return them their money because there's evidence that the person have never, never um, advertised this property for sale. The president saw the property and we know the, uh, the, the dictator, sorry, not the president, the dictator, I mean, saw the property and wanted that property. And we know, I um, mean, how he operates. That's, uh, but not only that, they produced the evidence from the NIA that this guy was arrested, this guy was tortured. That was enough. This, peop this family should not have been suffering, going around to try to prove anything to the courts or taking a lawyer to, to use their resources again. Because, you see, when we talk about justice for victims, it's not about only taking the perpetrators to court to make sure they, they are punished. That's one. But again, it's the dignity that we try to return to the, 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 the family. It's the dignity we try to return to the family, the dignity we try to return to the, uh, to the victim. And I would emphasize this. When we talk about a victim, we are not talking about an individual. If a victim, if a person become a victim, that person might be a father. If the person is a father and been a victim, that person then is a husband. That person is a father, is a husband, is a breadwinner. Just imagine then how many people are victims of, 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 of that person being a victim. If that person was abused, do we know the level of abuse that victim goes through? Gambia, I'll tell you, I don't know of any other victim that came through the TRRC to admit a male victim that he's been so, 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 sodomized. No victim came through the TRRC to say they've been sodomized. And I know four people. Gabians, dignitaries, been sodomized. You think they will come and tell you that they're sodomized? 
Do you know what that does to them? Do you know what it does to their relationships? Do you know how many women have been raped? They will not come and tell you that they've been raped. They, I mean, it's just to try to explain. And if the victim is a woman, he might be the mother. He might be, he's someone's daughter anyway. And we know the relationship we have with our daughters. This is how we should, ex until we have the empathy, empathy to understand what victim would stand for, we will not resolve this issue. That's why people are taking it lightly. Oh, let's forgive and move on. I am not praying for anybody to go undergo certain things that happen to them. The privilege that certain victims have trust in me to tell me, I know how that traumatized me, just telling me of their experience. I cannot even live to think how those victims are still suffering and going through this. Not to talk about their families as well. They, these are some people that I don't even know. Some of them I've never met. But because of an empathy telling me what they went through, it traumatizes me all the time, thinking about them. There, there are victims, women, that tell me that they cannot stand certain stand from, from, from our environment because it makes them recall the, what they went through. You think that wherever they go, they, there's something reminding them of, of what, what happened to them. Some of them cannot stand to see people in uniform because it reminds them of what they went through. I know a male victim who's been sodomized cannot stand the sense of cigarette or, 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 or weed or alcohol because of the people that sodomize him. That's what they smell of and the stand of, um, um, smell, uh, stand of a man. You think that is easy? You think those people are healed? How can they heal when society will not even I mean, I mean, empathize with them? But let's move on to this. This, that's one thing of punishing the people who have to do that. The other thing is society. But that society has to have leadership to, to, to accept the healing process, to help them to reconcile with themselves, reconcile with what they uh, I mean, try to heal and, and, uh, and, and recover from what they've been dealt with. But no, the abuse continue. How did this abuse continue? With everything that happened to this family, they try to reclaim this property. Now, they, the government don't want to give it to them. And the government is claiming that no, they sold the property to Jammeh. How can one sell the property to Jammeh? One, Jamme saw the property and won the property. There's no evidence that these people have placed the property anywhere. Anywhere to say that they're selling it. One, we, and we know how Jamme operates. Two, how can they sell the property when they, a, a member of the family who was looking after the property was arrested, taken to Maltu, uh, uh, taken to uh, NIA and punished? Uh, pro, not punished, tortured, sorry. Point of death, they have to, because of that pressure, they have to sell. Is that selling? Who sells their property in that manner? But not only that, the property was uh, over, I think it's over 40% devaluated or 60% devaluated. Yaya paid his own price. How did we know that? The, the money, part of the money used to finance the property, uh, the bank that lent part of the money to finance the property, they have the copy of the evaluation. What, when they have valued the property, how much it was worth. Two, they used, the owners went and got two independent evaluations to prove that their property was worth far more than what the Ayajami paid for. But that was enough. But do you know why they don't want to give the property? Just as I am coming to tell you another property. That's why I said this is what is bringing it up. And I know there are others uh, facing the same problem. Musa Drame, thank you, Musa Drame, the name came to you. Musa Drame is interested in taking this property. Now the property, when I last knew about the property, it was occupied by government. 
by government, uh, the, the, the uh, um, police intelligence agency or whatever they call them, they occupy that property. But the problem is the Musad Rami, once the property, they were trying a way of getting the property out. That's why they keep the property out of the portfolio of the properties uh, confiscated from them. Now, this is what they try to do. And this family are not, are not weak. They have capacity, they have strength, but they are victims. The government, they are now not only Jammeh's victims, now they are the victims of this government. Just ask, let me reference, to see that this is how this government is operating. Just as they did with the property of, um, that property for, owned by the charity, that medical charity that Nene, Nene Freda Gomez uh, works for. Just as they try to repossess that property, this is what they're doing. And that property they want to repossess from Nene Freda Gomez uh, company, uh, charity. Uh, they say that they give it to a Senegalese guy for a hotel. It's all a scam. We all know all the scams they're doing with the OIC project. That's what they're doing. Now, <coughs> let me come to this latest, what happened yesterday. A very prominent, a very prominent victim. I'm not going to, um, they are going to come and, and, and make their case. And from there on, I can come on, on behalf of that. Why am I coming to talk about it before them? is because what they shared with me is kind of traumatizing me. Because what is traumatizing here is, I want to explain this. It's knowing what they went through, having empathy on what they went through, what happened to them as a family, what it does to their family. I have to empathize with that. I, I have not directly experienced it. I don't need to directly experience it as a human being to empathize because I can imagine if I was taken away from my husband, wife, taken away from my daughter, taken away from my sons, and, and for my daughter, my wife and sons to leave, or my parents, my mother or my father to leave uh, for two decades or, or also without me knowing what happened to me. And now, after everything, now having this government that should be representing to fight for you, coming out to try to take your property. And I will come to this property. Now, because of that, thinking about it, what it does is not only think about them, but it brings up uh, all the other issues, all the other cases I know about, victim, uh, about vic victims. It's not about property. It's about victimhood. It's not about the property. It's about the trauma, uh, how they see themselves. And seeing themselves too, they look at, and, and, and to the conversation, what comes up it, because society accepted. Because when we were victims, we were left alone. When we were victims, during the IGMA, we were left alone. Even some family members would distance themselves because they don't want to be identified as family of this person because of then you will be a victim. But they'll survive that. Some of them went into exile. They don't need to go into exiles. This family was separated and everything else. A prominent, a prominent family completely disintegrated. And I, I cannot go into some of the other things that do happen, but we should know what happens when, 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 when this, I mean, we should have the empathy to understand. If it didn't happen to us, to understand what it's going to be like. They went through that. They are a very industrious family. They have capacity. They are landed. But with everything that happened to them, with everything that society abandoned them, they, they had their own struggle, hardly any support in the 22 years of what they went through. They held together as a family. They still did not abandon society. They could have just moved on. Said, look, Let's move on. No. They still want to make sure they give, continue, continue, not give back, continue. Continue, con not continue, the word continue. Why I emphasize on the word continue? Because their father have a profound effect on me. Impact on me being who I am today. I, if I would count if I would count, count my parents, 
their father would be among that 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 uh, that 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 have saved me to be who I am. Their father identify my disability. Their father identify my weakness. Their father uh, identify my strength. Their father encourage me to return to education. Their father uh, encourage me to, to I mean to, to to believe in myself that my uh, my. Uh, my um, my disability was not a weakness, but actually to identify what a strength it gave me, to be the person who I am today. And that family, that's what they stood for. That's what they've been doing. And when they come out, Gambians will be surprised that that family would continue be to be victimized by this government. Now, the property in question was acquired by their mother somewhere in Gambi, Greater Banyan area. That, this they acquired in, before 1994. Why did they acquire that property? It's not to live in the property, but to, 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 for, for social good. They want to build a school. That's why, because they are, uh, uh, I mean, their background of education, they want to build a school. And obviously what happened after 1994 uh, derail everything, they become a victim. But that did not stop them from paying, that did not stop them from paying the, 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 what is due, I mean, to the property. They pay the rates and everything else. That did not stop them from maintaining the property. They fence the property, they, they build a house in the property, they put someone in the property. That did not stop them. With all their struggles, they never, f I mean, uh, gave up hope that this country or this society can be rebuilt. It went on until we managed to get rid of the dictator, but unfortunately the system stayed. And yesterday when I spoke to one of the sisters, he said to me, even Yaya Jame spared the property. He took everything from us, but spared us property. Now these people coming to finish it up by taking this property. And this property, in fact, they, don't, they just don't want to put a school in there. They want to put a medical facility in the school. It's not that they are looking to make wealth from that property. No, it's for social good. Even if they want to make, uh, take it as a wealth, it's their property. They legally, lawfully obtain. They started, they already started development. To, to, towards this, um, I mean, I mean, objective they have for the property to to, to 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 represent the memory of their victimhood. This this is what the government should have been promoting. The government should have facilitating, creating a conducive environment for healing process. What did we have from the TRC? Look. I, I will come another day to tell you that the government of Gambia have not given a penny to the victims. And I, you'll be surprised where, how it happened. And again, Bartambi to play a role in making sure the government scam the Gambian people. The 50 million, US, uh, 50 million dollars given to the victim was not from government, it's from the Senegalese government. And that will be explained another day. But again, this family wanted to do something, to continue. They, they are already continue, they, they are continuing in the field of education, in the field of medical, to support citizens. They, they could have looked after themselves and just forget about everything. But with this government, Musa Drame, Musa Drame tried to, he, he, I mean, to the extent of being a minister of lands, overseeing everything possible, trying every hook and crook in the law, trying to justify repossessing the property from this family. Now, imagine if a family is that as influential, that have capacity, that can take care of themselves, that is strong, can be this country, government continue to try to victimize, what is happening to the other victims? That's why our empathy should be directed to the right people. 
not to start to give empathy to so-called perpetrators that come out through with crocodile tears or excuses or whatever it is. That's why I stand where I stand. I have no empathy for perpetrators of serious crimes. Because I know their remorse is not genuine. They did not stop. They were stopped. They would not have stopped. They would still have been killing us. The victims we should have, that's where our priority should be. Now, Musa Drami have tried everything. And guess what? It's not that the property is taken to give for a public good. The property he's taken to give to a relative. I'm not going to name the relative. As I said, I'm going to leave certain details for the victim family to come out. Now, it's costing the victim family, not only their resources, taking lawyers to try to, to defend themselves. It's costing victim family the another emotional, I mean, going through a journey. This victim family were trying to, to channel their, 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 their um, their pain and everything in something symbolic, something um, with sentimental value, something that they can look at to say that we, we are not victims um, for the sake of it. We are victims and our victimhood is in turn be for good by building a school, by having a medical facility, by continuing to help rebuild society. That's what they're trying to do. But no, now because of the land is in a very prime location, they want the land, and now Musa Drami got a family member to, to claim that land, trying to make the uh, government claim the land and issue that property to, to, uh, to the family member. Do you know, that's how they're doing it now. Because they're not sophisticated to build uh, cell companies. What they do is they create their families or their so-called business partners. Now they give the land to those people and they have their cut from that land. Probably that person will give them another land somewhere else and it's like an exchange or the person would some, somehow sell the land or somehow give them something um, as kickbacks. That's what they're doing. Now, uh, another point I want to emphasize on is, and as the, my, my, my lady friend have done yesterday was, what is society doing about this? He said, because of, we accept it. But he said, my family, his, her family are, are not, going to lie down and be walked on. They did not do it for Yajami, mean, they're not going to do it for this government. They're not going to do it for Musad Drami. Now, he said, I am contacting you because I know you. Uh, we are going to approach other people, but we are going to stand regardless of who comes with us or not. But we are not going to allow this injustice to continue. This is, this is, this is another point, as I said, I emphasize on, and I expect Gambians to start to understand now why I'm trying, what I took from this or what I take from this in order for, to share for all the Gambians to think about this is understand what the victims are going through and understand what victimhood meant and understand that when we keep on uh, going out there to, to champion the, the perpetrators of this crime, crimes to say that we have empathy with them, what we are saying that let's abandon our victims. Let's abandon our victims. But I think with our priorities, we should know. And um, this, is, this is not only one family. These are many families I don't even know. I just know some of them. And I give an example of if a strong families who have capacity, who are prominent, who are all this can be victims and continue to be victims. Imagine the other victims that have not have these connections or have not have the strength to fight on. And do we expect or do we think um, this will continue? We have seen Musa Drame done this. Musa Drame have done this by taking the land from the uh, Joshua woman garden. We, we looked, uh, we, some of us came out and took the land and gave it to a cousin or a brother again. And they tried to take another land somewhere else. They're taking lands or something. Musa Drame took land from the soldiers themselves. I'm not going to fight for that one. Soldiers can fight for themselves. A, a, a land in Sifo, a one kilometer um, farm that was in Sifo, confiscated from Yajami. That land was meant to be given to soldiers for, to, to build as a residence or whatever. That property now is going to private investors. We know why they're going to private investors. Not only that. Behind you in the barracks, behind you in the barracks, the land behind you in the barracks was gazetted 
in the time of colonial days. Musa Drame again tried to use technicality, saying that if the armed forces of the Gambia cannot prove the Gazette, when the armed forces of the Gambia don't have the access to prove a gazette that have happened during the colonial time. But we know how these things were gazetted. Some of us who were born or, or who were aware in the First Republic can tell you most of the land that have been gazetted or how it was gazetted by this. Any, any um, institution during the colonial period or residents of colonial representatives, any land around those areas are gazetted under, under protection. Now, these institutions are passed on. When the institutions or those resistance are passed on to government of the day, the government of the day has the ownership of that, or the institution have ownership of that. Just as when you go back out along the Atlantic Road, around the depot, all that land around the depot, all those links were gazetted. And, and that's why it transferred to the, uh, the, 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 the security sector. And now, Musa Dame, now is justified. I'm not sure how they far they gone about it. I, I told the soldiers, look, I think this is something that you could, people can fight for yourself. We're concentrating on the deal with the other issues. He's trying to take that land behind Yundum Barracks. And you know, the stupidity of this is, why do you want residents of civilians to res reside next to uh, military barracks? And we know what, what, what military barracks mean in Africa. We know what it means. When health breaks loose, what, what happens? But they don't care. It's only money they care about. Guys, I just want to keep the video that short. I said it's not the full details, but I am waiting for the family to come out. It's just that I have to come out uh, for my sake, I mean, to, 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 uh, to get some of this out of my system. But again, because uh, I got this inspiration, at least at the, uh, to, to, call, to galvanize uh, uh, Gambians and to, 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 for some of my um, compatriots to understand when they go out, to show empathy to, to, uh, to, to perpetrators of crime, what does that really mean to the victims? And again, to emphasize on what victim, victims mean. When a woman is a victim, that woman might be a mother, definitely is a sister, definitely is a daughter, and all those people connected will be affected. When a man becomes a victim, definitely he's a brother, definitely he's a son, and grandson or whatever it is, and it's most likely a father. And if he's a father, he's a breadwinner. We all know how it's rocked. Now, if these people are victims, you know the impact, uh, what is it? And you think someone will just come out with crocodile tears and, and, and whatever these things, say that I was young when I was doing it, but you were very powerful to know what you need to know. Uh, you, if you decide to take over a government, I don't think you, are, you should be held responsible, You're not young enough I mean, I mean, to, to be prosecuted. These are things that we should uh, compare. And again, impunity. The minute we continue to promote impunity, we think we learn from this. We keep on questioning why the PIU are behaving this way, why the police are behaving this way, why the soldiers are behaving this way. We keep, keep, keep on asking ourselves why corruption is endemic, because nothing comes out of it. You do what you want and nothing comes out of it. Why do you think, why do you think people think twice? To, uh, to harm an Israeli citizen because of the Israelis will come after you. They think twice. Even the most powerful countries think twice to, to trespass on Israeli citizens. Americans uh, arrested Israeli citizens, they, they repatriate them. Because of one way or the other, Israelis will get back on you until we value our people. Until we value our people, our country will not move forward. Thank you very much and have a good day.